what's trending live from the Samsung Blogger Lounge in Austin, Texas at South by Southwest. I'm Cheryl Lazar. Yeah. Joined by my head writer, Lon Harris. That's me. And joining us on stage. stage today, Alia Shawkat, Jason Ritter, Lawrence Michael Levine from Wild Canaries. Welcome. Woo. Give it up for them. Hi. And congratulations. You're just talking about this. Uh, your movie premiered last night. Amazing reviews already, but you haven't even seen. You don't like research what people say about it, I'm assuming, or look it up the next day. I do. I do you try to avoid well, it? Uh, my I try not to read. You want to read it. You're dying. You do this. You know, part, at least partially because you want to connect with people, so you want to know if that's if it's working. Yeah. Or to get famous. But um, yeah, or to get famous. <laughs> We're trying for um, both. Yeah, but you know, you tend to remember the bad ones, so it's best to stay away if you can. So tell us a bit about uh, the movie, and which has been described as transcending the the, the hipster, hipster New comedy. York City comedy is what the IndieWire review. So said. what does that actually mean? And, and tell people a bit about the film. Uh, I don't know what that means. It, sound, it sounds nice. It does sound cool. Um, I don't really think in those terms. The idea that I would ever be doing anything hip is strange to me. Um, That's what makes it hip, though. Okay. Uh, yeah, this movie reaches back to the 1930s for its inspiration to the Thin Man series, so I don't know how hip that is. People like Nora Charles are pretty hip. They were doing all right. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, it's, um, it's a comedy suspense film. It's a, it's a, it's a comedy with a a murder, potential murder mystery at the heart of it. Right. And it's about a young woman who suspects that her elderly neighbor has been murdered while her fiance thinks that she's nuts. And with their, uh, with their roommate, played by Alia, they slowly begin to investigate and uh, uncover secrets throughout the building they live in, um, including their own apartment and within their own relationships. So it kind of jumps back and forth between a proper murder mystery and then a, a relationship film. We, we do sure have a, a clip for the yeah, film. Let's so let's, uh, a for right a little now. context, let's take a look at that. Great. Yeah, who did the uh, who did the music? Uh, this guy named Michael Montez. Mm -hmm. He was awesome. I had this idea for music that I didn't even know if it was possible. It was sort of a mixture of dub reggae, which is this sort of psychedelic form of reggae, yeah. uh, and Henry Mancini, like the Pink Panther sure, soundtrack. Yeah. So I went in and I was like, uh, you know, Pink Panther meets Augustus Pablo, dub reggae, and he was like, <laughs> yeah. We could do that. I'm feeling it. And I was like, really? Yeah. You can? And then, and then, you know, we started to mix in all these other flavors, too. Yeah. Hitchcock and... And uh, that was your that. wife, actually. Uh, yeah. The other female star you saw in that clip. Uh, and you also, to call. And you also star in this. So, like, what, you do multiple roles. I mean, what is it like, you know, directing your wife? Mm -hmm. As well as being a star yourself and multitasking everything. Uh, directing your wife is... Empowering uh, is really weird because yeah, in my life she's directing me, you know, so uh, that's an adjustment. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the first couple notes I give her on set, she's like, "What? You're talking to me." <laughs> but uh, 
It's great. It's really fun. Making movies takes a lot of time. It's, sure. it's really, um, it's really time intensive. So it's great that we get to spend that time together. Sort of for, for everybody. I mean, I think one thing we saw even in that clip we were just watching, th it's a really delicate balance to make something that's funny, but then you also, like, you get it best, like, oh, oh no, he's going to find her in that room, and it's, like, suspenseful. How, how do you sort of balance that, and are you really paying attention to that, both in terms of your performances and, and the direction, like, while you're making the movie? Jason, I'll throw it to you. Um, yeah, I mean, that was that was one of the challenges of it is that there always are those two threads going along and so I mean to be honest for the most part we just trusted L Lawrence uh, to, to make sure that we were <laughs> hitting that thing I mean we went for it and but you know there were times where it would be like it needs to be you know you need to creep up slower and build the tension because you right. know there's going to be this great music and you're like, oh, oh yeah okay so, um, you know, it was one of those things where you, you, one of those experiences where you're able to trust your director and, uh, and then be rewarded for it because right. I, he really did a good job being like, oh, it's, it's airing a little too much on this side or this side sure. and you've got to, you know, find the balance. How do you get involved in the murder case? Uh, I'm their uh, landlord, their artist landlord, and it, it's basically the whole building. There's everyone sort of... There's more going on in everyone's sort of floor. Uh, mm -hmm. there, Kevin Corrigan is also in our building, and so everyone's, you know, they start discovering secrets about the building and everything like that, and I'm just one of the players. <laughs> now we're getting uh, questions in uh, over Twitter, and I want to encourage you all to tweet using the hashtag Samsung S X S W. Also, Lon is in the chat room. I am. We do have a gratuitous Arrested Development question. Of course we do. Ah, yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll field this one. Thanks. Uh, will there be another Netflix season or a film? Dot, dot, dot. Um, yeah, you know, they just kind of let us know. Like, uh, they give us, like, maybe two days ahead of time before any notice. So we'll just get like a mass email that's like, we're shooting in two days. And we're like, all right, we'll be there. Like, yeah. So as of now, no news. Uh, but maybe one day. I'll find out Any 48 minutes. hours before. Yeah. <laughs> oh, happen. I just got an email. Oh. I gotta go. Oh. Breaking the news. See you guys. 20 minutes. Luckily, yeah, you know your character well enough. that You're like, yeah, no development needed to prep for this. Yeah. It's like, yeah, just tell me like an, an hour in advance. I'll be there. And, and uh, Jason, while we've got you here, uh, got to ask you, you're playing Charles Manson in a film. That is intense. What? Did you know called, I fought Creep. the law. How do you prepare for a role like not only of someone who's real, but someone who's so infamous? Uh, you do a lot of uh, panic attacks and <laughs> a lot of anxiety. Uh, no, I, I, I've been uh, watching a lot of. There's a lot of interviews of of him. There's also a, there's a lot of uh, books written by other people. There's also, you know, he's written a lot of stuff, so you sort of... Yeah. Um, and records, too, like his and music and stuff? Yeah, yeah, his music. Uh, yeah, he, it's, he's, a, he's a fascinating and terrifying guy, and, and yeah. you know, the, 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 the way his mind works, and, you know, there's like a strange logic to it that's not our logic, and right. so after a while, you can see how you sort of get woven in to what his thought process is and you all of a sudden are kind of lost yourself. You understand why oh, he yeah. was such a influential, I mean, person to all these people sure. because he can, he talks in circles and pretty soon you're like, oh yeah, you okay, that makes sense. It. And all then right. you step outside and you go, that is insane. <laughs> I don't even really understand what he was talking about. So yeah, but it's been, it's been a fun um, experience. You're still so sweet. I can't imagine you that dark. Eh. <laughs> see the movie? Maybe I can. <laughs> see the <that last? laughs> yeah, All right, now, now I see I'm it. Terrible. That was kind of freaking uh, me out. We read a lot online as well that was describing this film as, as mumblecore and part of this like mumblecore movement. And I think you've, you've all done films or been in films that are sort of associated even loosely with that. What, what do you think of that as a, as a sort of a term for these kinds of movies and a genre? And is that something when you're making a movie you're thinking, okay, this is going to be... Mumblecore, I'm going to do it in sort of a certain way. I remember when I first heard the term mumblecore, uh, nothing could have sounded less interesting to me. <laughs> right, yes. I, I really, like, it's, I, I hadn't seen any of the movies that they were talking about at that point. Right. And so it just sounded like a bunch of people like, oh, what do you feel like? I don't know. Let's go to the movies or something. I, I really, I thought it was just mumbling. Mumbling. Um, so the early ones, like Funny Haha, -ha was basically mumbling. <laughs> now people are speaking clearly. Yeah, I mean, I, but I think, I think uh, you know, I, I mean, I think 
anytime the, uh, music or film, anytime there's a movement and then they, it gets labeled, there's always a little like pullback of like, no, we're not. It's our, like no one likes to be labeled and things like that. I've ended up really liking most of the movies that are labeled Mumblecore. I think it, it stands for... Um, like a Very naturalistic style. Naturalistic yeah. style, maybe some improvising. I think a lot of mumblecore uh, movies, uh, one of their things is that they really trust the actors that they hire to um, have an opinion and, you know, and other bigger budget things. There's a lot of sort of squelching of right. actors who are like, oh, yeah, uh, sure, do whatever you want. There's a giant explosion behind you that people are going to be like, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, really, I really like like it, but... Mumblecore. That was actually it's the first strange. I heard of Mumblecore. Just now when I said the word Mumblecore? Yeah, when I read this, I was like, I don't know about Mumblecore. <laughs> it's a whole thing. So, so yeah, like, I, I feel like we live in a, such a media-saturated uh, country that, like, these little catchphrases really, um, really, like, tip people off, but they also tend to hem people in. Yeah. I mean, I don't think this has much to do with mumblecore. Um, yeah, I mean, this to me, but, I, that was my thought with seeing clips and stuff. It's like, well, this looks like a, a pretty conventional, it's like a mystery comedy. That's a long-standing, nobody calls Manhattan murder mystery a mumblecore movie. Yeah, so that, yeah. that was why I was I interested know. reading that, that, that but, it's now classified there. But my friend did come up with a catchy name for it, which was Mumble Noir. Ah, Ooh. there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like I that. That was pretty good. That is good. There's like a, a new sub sub. Mumble genre. something. I think about a cat, a black and white cat, when I think yeah. like that. Mumble noir. <laughs> okay. um, we also have another question uh, for you, Alia. The uh, the internet is, for some reason, fascinated by your friendship with Ellen Page. So why do you think it's become an online meme? It's become a meme. There, there was a. I think meme we might have a like screenshot a of it. There was a Buzzfeed oh, post that was just picking like the top moments. In the ah. Ellen Page, <laughs> Ellen Shawcat friendship. Actually, Ellen sent me this. She thought it was very cute. <laughs> um, yeah, Ellen Page is as neat as it gets. She's just this cool chick, and um, we become very close, and um, we like making art together. Ah. And so, yeah, I'm glad people are into our lives. <laughs> Fascinated by the two of you together. Does it freak you out when stuff like that comes out? Uh, a lot of things freak or me out. Or inspires you. Yeah, I think a little bit of both. I'm kind of disconnected from the internet world. So, you know, I hear it here now, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's a picture of me and my friend we took years ago in some warehouse. So, I don't know. I don't have a strong connection to it. <laughs> but I'm glad people like it. Maybe they'll go see our movies and stuff. We are, we are almost at time. One, one more question uh, from the fans. Uh, both of your features so far have been set in, in and around Brooklyn. What, what is it about that as a location and a place to shoot that really appeals to you? Um, actually, it's a really unappealing place to shoot. New York is really congested and expensive, and it's hard to make movies there. Uh, so I don't know why I keep doing it. <laughs> Just <laughs> glutton for punishment? Uh, yeah, actually, we had to make this movie in Brooklyn because, uh, well, um, the whole thing was conceived to do it in our apartment building and in our own apartment. Right. Since we had access to that building and the roof of that building in our own apartment, and the hallways and stuff. Less it budget, was actually yeah. affordable to make a movie. <laughs> totally. Right. So, um, and also, the, the whole New York rent control um, culture and the cutthroat real estate environment in New York plays a big part in the um, mystery and conspiracy sure, that yeah. these uh, characters may or may not unspool. Mm -hmm. um, so there's this, you know, the movie, this movie really needed to be set in New York because of the real estate. Right. Real estate. I, I love what's going on next to you. Well, we're like all in a serious comedy. <laughs> Give it up for Alia Jason, Lawrence Michael Levine. Wild Canaries is in Austin, Texas right now. Go see it. We appreciate it, you guys. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. And Thanks coming for up, us. don't go anywhere if you're on youtube.com slash watch trending or here at the Samsung Blogger Lounge. We that's have uh, Jenny Slate from Obvious Child coming up. Whoa. Yeah. That's yeah. Where is she? Yeah, you should say hi. Let's just all uh, wear your shoes, be along. Work shoes. Be along. Uh, remember, tweet using the hashtag Samsung SXSW, and we'll see you in just a bit right here on What's Trending. Bye, guys.